Good evening, good evening. Hopefully everybody is doing well. I just want to make sure studio is set up right. Um, I've had people complain, and I just want to reiterate... Good uh, evening, good evening. Sorry, I've got sound on that shouldn't be on. Um, I have a lot of people say something about the time in the beginning of this. The way I run my studio, I don't actually want to pop on until I know it's running, and with the delay, it takes like 15 seconds or 18 seconds for me to know if it's going to run. Sometimes YouTube doesn't pick it up, so I have to run something so at least we don't miss any of the show. So just FYI, it's a necessity the way I run my show. So anyway, I've got a lot of big news in the background that um, I wish I could announce some things because there's, there's quite a few things that have been going on very, very well. We've got another business, as I've talked about. We've got art stuff that we do. Uh, I've I've picked up some things. I've got some contracts, more contracts than I've ever had in my life signed in the last few weeks. A um, lot of things uh, helpful-wise to the reselling uh, business in general. I did have an article. I'm not calling this out because of I'm being promoted to say it. I do write for e-commerce bytes. Again, I'm not paid to say that. I write for an article and I'm compensated for my article. That's it. I have no other associations, no promotions, no nothing. I've been reading e-commerce bites for six, seven years maybe. So this is nothing to do with me per se. But I did write an article, uh, thanks to Ina. Um, but I do have an article on um, item specifics going right head off at or at eBay. I know they read that because, again, I won't go into the details, but you all know that they, we all know that eBay reads e-commerce bytes. So it's probably the best uh, blog post that I personally uh, have ever read that covers all the topics that I'm interested in and none of the other BS that has no bearing on my business. So just FYI, um, read the article. I've dropped a link in here. Get some action on it if you can. Uh, I want eBay to to know how angry and upsetting this is, and how much it's it's costing people. That's not the conversation today. I'm just starting it off, so we're not going to just complain. That the title is not a a complaint. I want to address the options, the 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 current state of reselling right this very second. Um, even taking aside the issues with eBay, take eBay out of the picture. There's still a reselling platform or enough reselling business platforms and sites, even if eBay shut down tomorrow, where I'm still in business without much of a fuss. I just would swing it to somewhere else. So I'm not pulling eBay out of the picture as of yet. That's not my intent. The point of it is, though, you should be ready if one of these sites goes down or gets bought or something happens to it. Cover yourself. Just... Don't have all your eggs in one basket is the point. The, the state of reselling right now, and we'll get to chat in just a few moments here. I'm not trying to. I want to get to at least the topic for today so we can kind of, if there's questions or comments, we can go from the topic itself. The, the point of reselling today is that I, I started my reselling journal, journey. and I never even thought about it until like modern days. Back when I was a child, when I was... Uh, this is a story. We're gonna we're gonna do story talk today. We're talking about the state of reselling. I want to I want to express where it came from for me and and why it's so lucrative still to this day and why there's so many options to it. I started off going to garage sales on the summer when school was out when I was a child. My mom could not afford a babysitter. She they switched off with Chrissy, which was a childhood friend of my mom's. And sometimes I would hang out with their kids at their house and there'd be an adult there or something else. I was seven, I was eight. So my mom usually took me with them and my brother as well too. So it wasn't usually just me, but uh, so wherever she went. So I was stuck in, in this area, garage sales used to only be on Wednesdays. I don't know if there was something or there was more on Wednesday. So every Wednesday I went garage sailing in the 70s, mid early 70s for you know, until I was old enough, I think 12 or so, when I was allowed to stay home legally wise by state law here, I still went because I always found cool things. And, and on top of that, when I was, and I just talked about this in another video not too long ago, when Star Wars came out, that was my first foray into reselling, into really reselling to an extent, but I had no idea that's what I was doing. I was able to trade 
two, even three Star Wars cards um, from somebody else. I would get two or three cards from them for one that they needed that I had. And I had quickly amassed a massive assortment of, you know, five, ten copies of almost every single card out there. And it kept growing and growing. And eventually I was able to put sets and sell sets. And and uh, I supplied, like, literally most of the entire neighborhood who collected Star Wars cards. And that was everybody I knew. Every single kid in the block when I was a kid was just in awestruck with Star Wars. And everybody, whether it was the kids in the football or sport, whatever it was, everybody I knew, everybody on the block was into Star Wars. So it was a, for me, I had all the Star Wars cards and all that kind of stuff. And I, I've always done that stuff. I bought the records when I was a child. My very first record was, um, uh, oh shoot, uh, The Talking Heads. And I can't remember the title of it, but Stay Up Late, uh, Road to Nowhere, um, and what's the other one? Um, Stay Up Late was my favorite off that album, but uh, that was my first LP I ever owned. So in that, I got it the year it came out at a garage sale. I don't even couldn't even tell you the year, but I've always been in, into into this stuff. So I've always had the knack and the interest to go to these places. My grandmother passed away when I was, geez, I don't even know if I could tell you the, the date without it. it was, maybe I was 14, and my uncle was uh no he wasn't my uncle i'm sorry my cousin cousin bill was a antique dealer um it was uncle's relative he was an antique dealer locally and when my grandmother passed away she hoarded everything she had antiques of everything and i helped him go through it and this was like the one of the biggest antique dealers around here at the time i don't know who he was i, I knew he was a cousin but I don't, I don't think i've even met him before that that time so um i i got to see values and price and I went back to his antique uh, store, which is huge to me as a kid at, at that age and stuff. And, you know, I, it's always been there. So the reselling market that we're in right now came from that sort of business. The antique malls, the people that would go out and pick up estate sales and things like that. There were flea markets, as there are now. It was a different structure than what you see now. A lot of the flea markets that I remember when I was a child were more so vintage as opposed to what you see now, Chinese stuff. Again, I'm not trying to crack in any country. I'm just, the difference is you wouldn't see any imports at any of the flea markets that I ever went to for, for like in the eighties and before. I don't remember seeing any imports at all. It was all either used clothing or stuff like that. So that's where eBay sprung up from. eBay started off as a, a flea market and eBay was the first platform other than say like a yahoo or a yahoo yahoo auctions uh site which we did do yahoo auctions back in the day the first full-fledged uh actual website though i would consider ebay it used to be called something else i don't remember the name of it I, we started like right after they changed it to ebay um, but that was the first one, and that's where reselling came from. The old school guys that would do the garage sales, the old school guys that would have antique stores or do the vintage malls on the weekend. It wasn't like usually a permanent building or things like that. Antiques back then, too, were mostly confined to uh, smaller stores. I don't remember many giant malls like there are today. Um, that's a more of a modernized thing from my part. I, I'm not saying there weren't any, but around here there weren't. And, and that's literally the roots of reselling in general. Now let's just skip all that junk in the middle from eBay starting till the time eBay started to do well and it started to branch off in stocks. That's when the market was still like the, the good old days. Meg was in the company. We still had a, a respectful, mutual I think in my my personal feelings, a, a relationship with the company that they made it very apparent that, that they wanted us part of the relationship. They treated us as a stakeholder. Um, a stakeholder means anybody who has like a, a invested interest in the company, not a stockholder. Stockholder pays. A stakeholder is part of the, the peripheral group of people that would have some sort of investment, the sellers, the third parties and, and stuff. I, I do finally remember those days because compared to these days, it was fun. It was really fun. And that's part of why auctions and, and that's part of why eBay got so big in the first place because it was entertainment. It was fun. It was exciting. I, I don't remember 
I, I couldn't even begin to tell you how many days we spent in the evenings and people, just groups and stuff, watching stuff and looking at the final seconds of auctions and things like that, especially if they're items we were selling and the excitement usually was in the last 20, 30 seconds or 10 seconds. Um, it didn't it used to be as bad as it is th these days. They didn't have the sniping tools that you can use nowadays to snipe in and a quarter of a second or a tenth of a second before it ends or whatever they do nowadays but you know it, it's it's come a long way the the roots of what reselling was which again was pretty much just people selling used stuff hardly ever you'd see a lot of new stuff on ebay at all it wasn't a, a thought yeah that people sold it but in in my world you never thought of ebay for buying new stuff even in general, a lot of these sites on, on the net weren't, you know, offering, you know, anywhere near even a, a small percentage of their items for sale online. It was still a, an opened, you know, wild west of reselling, so to speak. And I say this, you know, with all uh, um, passionate uh, interest in this. This is, this is my passion. So I'm not just wildly throwing out some comments or something to occupy your time. This is literally, I think about this. I've written down a lot of these kind of things. You will see some, a, f a few books. We've got a, a couple books. One's already at a publishing house right now, one of my manuscripts. So I, I, I'm invested into all this aspect. I enjoy the history. I, I have extremely fond memories of the early days, a good good long time when Meg was in, in charge of the company and even, you know, a little before that. But, you know, it, it, it's veered off from what it was, from what created eBay to begin with, this whole fun uh, experience. It's turned more into just purely business and that is it. And, and sad, sad as it is, that is the fact of, of the reselling world as it is today. All, all it is is money. I don't see as much joy. I don't see anywhere near joy from the resellers. It's turned into a dredge for a lot of people. Um, I made a comment the other day. I would rather take a little less money for something and enjoy what I'm doing more than that. I, I know the money. I, I know everybody says you're just saying that just to for impression or what. I'm not saying that for impression. I don't go out and worry about anything fancy for the most part. Not that I I, I can't afford it, but I, I don't care. I'd, I'd wear the exact same shirt, same pair of jeans every day of the week if it was something that you could get away with. But I, that's that's me. I don't really care what somebody says about what I wear or anything else like that. It's, I could care less. But it's not the money. It's the enjoyment part. It, it's changed that aspect of it. And I, I, I hear people with comments, you know, you don't do a lot of haul videos and stuff. Again, that that's unfortunately... Uh, uh, side effect of getting bigger, I guess, in, in doing different things than, than you used to do. My business has, you know, ballooned out, on, you know, luckily to, to a point where, you know, I'm on a very rigorous schedule, I guess. I mean, things are, are progressing, you know, aggressively. So it's almost like a cruise control. And this isn't a brag. This is just, it, it's taken away some of the fun. I'm not giving up anything. I, I am... We are contemplating where where we fit in and what our next move should be with the the current state of reselling. Again, eBay's thrown us for a, a big curve here with all these ridiculous and totally time wasting activities. I I ma micromanage pretty much my times here and what we spend on anything and. and I know a lot of people uh, personally that we've talked to. I know Bob's in the house. There's quite a few other folks in the house. I think I saw Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter. Again, we're we're on tomorrow together. I'm on Dom's channel, Primetime Treasure Hunter, uh, tomorrow at 8 o'clock. If you are unaware, hopefully everybody saw the notice. I know he has posted it already. I am looking forward to it. But, um, geez, I just lost my whole train of thought. Um, the, the point, again, is... is I've got to figure out with all of the changes and what eBay's doing if I'm I'm totally just wanted to swamp in the money or I want to be a little happier. The whole reason I'm into this so heavy is because I do enjoy it and I, I do like the freedom it gives me. So if eBay or anywhere else is going to be constantly dragging on my my headacheness and constantly i get headaches all the time for my eyes i don't need any more issues so you know we're, we're looking at options right now i've been in the works for quite some time with some other other um sites i've been in the works and conversations with some folks um 
who are creating a site as well as I've now reached out to some folks who do uh, or are putting together an adult only site so I, I'm I have an invested interest in where this all goes for my business. I'm not giving up reselling, so don't even don't even think that. I'm not pulling the items off eBay as of yet. I have obviously backed up every image, every single listing, every single title, and every single thing I have in there linked together. So if something ever would to, you know, I can do anything I want with my listings to, to that, that point. Um, I, I again I referred into a video talking about item specifics the other day in, in reference some things some of the comments even on eBay's own live chats and message boards were that um, you should recommend using a six bit or ink frog or any of these other ones to back up your information now that's terrible that from what I saw eBay didn't say oh you shouldn't be doing that um, it, it just shows that nothing is safe if eBay's working with these folks to back up your own data that eBay's supposed to be protecting in the first place. So again, I have worries. I've got concerns over the, the current state, but it's a huge market. There's so much going on in reselling. I, I, I Again, if, if part of my business shuts down or I move it, it's not going to hurt me more than, say, a month or so, if that, because there's so many other opportunities. Right now, I've, I've turned down things. I've not done certain actions or movements that could improve or bring in revenue because of the, the, the current state. I don't need to. What What's coming in now is still growing. And time-wise, you know, everybody's got to set up their time differently and, and decide where their business is going. I've got other projects. We've been working on some artwork projects. Um, there's some folks I've talked about it with before. I've even shown a, a clip or two. We've done some animation. I've got toy lines that are... Are, I've got that are actually sitting in sealed box right now with bubble the bubble and the card and everything ready um, I've got postcard lines I mean I've got a lot going on and if, if you know one thing leads to another my business isn't gonna get sunk or tanked or anything if one aspect of it I move off of again I don't have all my eggs in one basket by any chance by any means of the world I've actually just not even developed some projects some ideas and some things just because I've got so many other things going at this point um, again this 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 isn't meant as as like a, hey I'm better than you or a brag or anything this is just it's a lot to think about for 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 me or for anybody else who's at a stage where you know they're only on one platform again not recommended or they're on several platforms in one site. I'm not trying to, again, pick on eBay in this aspect of it. I don't think anybody there management-wise has a clue or has a brain. In my opinion, they haven't a clue what they're doing. But the the you, you've got to take this seriously if this is really what you want to do. And there are opportunities out there. So if, if I have to lose a little bit of money to change directions, it's not going to hurt me. But... I would honestly recommend no one just jumping off one revenue stream to go to another until you're more established. I don't end something unless it's too much of a, there's major issues with it. eBay's getting there, mind you, but because you don't cut off a revenue stream. Again, that's why I, I can tell you without a doubt eBay's clueless. I would never cut off a revenue stream um, at all. And, and I don't, they can say it's they cut off adult entertainment again we'll touch on that for a second because it's managed payments or apple pay or something i've had several people point that out and say that's what it was but i can also point out several people who were quoted and and i've seen some screenshots which do appear to be from an ebay conversation stating that they can continue to sell adult material in managed payments until june 15th so you know i i, I from what i've seen what i've been told by several sellers of adult materials that wasn't the issue at all. So again, I don't believe half of, I'll tell you, I take this back, I don't believe 99% of what upper management at eBay says. Unfortunately, I can't believe everything that's spoken um, to me as well um, from people on the phone. But the people on the phone, I don't believe at all it's their fault. They can only give the information out that they're given from the people above them. You know, so, uh, and I, I would imagine at this point, too, that um, from what I see and some of the comments made, too, and how I get some of the negatives that eBay may be trying to counter some of this because I've gotten a whole bunch 
of comments, which I'm not posting anymore at all, praising eBay and that this I'm stupid. I mean, just a whole bunch of stuff like that. But they're all pretty much worded the same with different people posting them. So, and they're all praising how great eBay is and all these other issues. So, at this point, um, you know, e eBay's not trying to change uh, what's going to happen with all this. They're just going to try and change the narrative through marketing. Again, these are my opinions. You can take them as you will, but we already know they do that kind of stuff. Again, we can just go back to e-commerce bites to show without a doubt what the extreme these people will go and what the last CEO stated um, in a business meeting at eBay, on eBay property, on eBay time. So that's all I need to know going forward. So you know, I know who I'm in bed with, and everybody else should obviously at this point as well. You can say the same thing about Amazon or anybody else. Again, that, that goes back to why you have to keep uh, spreading out your eggs in different baskets and stuff. I had just today, before the show, somebody had, had made a post. One of the kids, in fact, I don't think he's down here. One of the kids posted or pointed out that um, one person said they were just shut down on Amazon for uh, no idea, no explanation, no contact, won't refer, anything. And it could happen anywhere. So... I don't try and lock up all my revenue stream on one, two, three, four sites. I am on quite a few sites these days, quite a few other spots I try to get revenue from and, and things like that. So reselling wise, you can go with the flow. You can try your best at putting your stuff out there. Now, here, here's one more one more um, idea here and thought that, that I've been trying to express to quite a few people, like Bonanza, for example. Now, Bonanza did a big push, if you didn't read any of the articles, like on e-commerce bites or something like that. Uh, Bonanza did a big push. Now, I didn't see any advertisement on the regular net, so had I not seen e-commerce, I probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have even uh, realized they did it. But they did a push, and apparently the majority of all sellers who were involved in their push saw some sales from it. Now... Again, they're they're slow. I most comments in, in my personal experience, you'll be lucky to get one sale a month, even with quantity. But you know, at some point, things can change overnight, as we know. They could something could happen. They could merger with somebody. Anything. It, it's always something. It's always good to not burn bridges and have other streams available, even if they're small. If I make an extra. 50 bucks a month in my personal opinion it would be worth signing up for another site if there's no fees and and that's 50 bucks profit above and beyond any expenses on the site 600 dollars a year extra now again that's not going to change anybody's life or anything but if there's three sites that do that we're up to 1800 dollars a year so you know that's bills for somebody for an entire month too many people look away from those small trickle uh, uh um revenue streams but I, 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 in all honesty that's part of why reselling is 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 so lucrative because you can build and keep adding on all these little streams I, I, i'm not i would never show my tax statements but let's this year i had 43 pages for my federal tax um i don't know what everybody else has but i had 43 different pages uh of, you know schedules and all the other aspects of it because you got to break down all your revenue streams are reported separately, obviously. So, you know, even if you're, because they all come in on, on different 1090, 99s and, uh, and your 10 to T's. And, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that comes in. So it, all those little things all add up to a bigger and bigger amount for your, for your business, for your company, for your family. So when you're out there thinking about, you know, hey, Bonanza's slow, I, I have no affiliation with Bonanza. I'm not on Bonanza now, but we are probably just going to go out and do it, even if it's only the 50 bucks a month. It'll take up uh, slack if I start backing off and because I'm just done with listing like certain items on eBay or whatever the case may be. Again, there's all kinds of options. I know I just talked to somebody today that just opened up their Discogs account. Um, I'm, I never try to call it names. And I almost did that. but So I, I, I hear all this stuff in, in I get feeling for, you know, where other people are in their business. The two of the people I talked to today have 12,000 plus items in their store. So they're not they're not tiny. They they've been around a while. They're individual individual people that are are paying the bills for their family and one of them has one child and one has three. So in, in they're they're seeing similar similar ideas. I do bounce back and forth with with folks and stuff. I'll be chatting with uh, Mr. Magazine and Paper Guy Dave Chuck and Dave here in another week or so too. Um, we're gonna run some ideas back on things as well. 
uh, again, I've been spending a lot of time conversing. Um, email today, I was just off the chain with stuff going on and, and stuff. And I promise, though, too, if I do find some other ways or some things that I would say would be doable and viable, that I will be announcing those out, showing you the insights. I will have Mark, the CEO from the HIP platform, coming on the channel. Um, we're still in going back and forth on some things. I will have an affiliate link coming up real soon. So I would honestly, if you want to wait till you get the link, it'll give you three free months of access to their site. So you won't pay any monthly fees. Um, and uh, anything you sell, though, there will be a final value fee. I would get a affiliate commission off of that. Again, only if you sign up and only if you transfer so much inventory. And I'm not ripping. There's no cash given to me to do that or anything else like that. But uh, they they did some work. I've went back and forth and stuff. I've used their site for well over a year uh, successfully into the thousands. So, I, again, I start off small. Part of the reason I'm bringing up Bonanza, I started on HIP. And we sold enough to pay for the subscription and then probably three, four times that on average every month. Well... Through the, the year that I've been on HIP, I've conversed and the, the, a couple people have reached out and stuff. And on, I've made some suggestions and shortly thereafter, they've added in other categories. They're working after other categories. Mark himself told me that. And overnight, they opened up a huge section. So instead of 4,200 listings, 43, 4,400 listings of postcards only, I was able to import 18,000 items into their free and clear no extra fees they instantly imported no problems with it syncs for you and everything and overnight i went from you know 4x or so to uh, uh hundreds of dollars because all these new items float on their site who knows with bonanza who knows with some of these other sites i i i've tried poshmark and stuff like that and mercari mccary however it's pronounced again i'm not really concerned on the pronunciation but the, the 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 point is I may look back into that after some people have showed me a few screenshots. Even if again, as I said, a hundred dollars extra a month, twelve hundred dollars. That's rent for somebody out there. Don't tell me that's not what would it take you to earn twelve hundred dollars? So it, it's a little extra effort for some if if it doesn't sink. But if you're running a platform that sinks like HIP, again, I'm not trying to push it. You know I've talked about HIP for a very long time. I've got videos how how to do HIP. I talk about HIP in, in Patreon for more than a year. So again, I'm, I'm not a not trying to be a, a sellout at all. They offer a valid service that has made us thousands of dollars. So, and that's a valid statement too. So I'm, you know, it's things like that. It's those little tiny things that you can add to your business that are, are why reselling is totally different than, than they were back then. The only option I had was eBay back 10, 15, 20 years ago. The only option you had. So bad. If eBay was the only one here, you'd be at their whim. Technically, you kind of are if you're just only tied to eBay. But if you're expanding out, it broadens your horizon. You have more opportunities, more chances to do geez, so many more different things. I, I've said this before. I know somebody who personally, um, hang on just one second here. I got like seven different things going on. I'm sorry. Um, I know somebody who personally does $5,000 or more every single month on selling design t-shirts, just t-shirts that they, that they design. They rotate the designs. They've got a couple hundred t-shirt designs and that's all they do. And they don't fulfill them at all. They take a little less and they do them through Teespring and there's like two other pages that they do them through. It's their own stuff. Some of them are just words. They, they showed me one that was, let's just say it was the simplest shirt design with no thought put into it, but it was selling thousands of dollars worth a month. I, I, I honestly laughed and, and I thought you're pulling my leg on this until he showed me his, his payout on it. Um, you know, there's there's so many opportunities to do stuff like that. I know it's a huge market. I know it's tough to get into. He started off in the beginning, and he's he, he's 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 one of those guys that um, I thought I was good on some of the trending information, but he's really good on the shirts. He knows his clothing, and I don't know clothing enough to do that. But um, that's the point. There's there's so many broadened horizons and reselling in the world right now which we live in that that just weren't possible when i first got into this and and don't 
tie all your hopes on one site, one platform, or anything. That may work for you. I'm not saying it wouldn't. I'm not saying eBay might not. eBay might be the best site in the world for many of you out there. I'm not going to say that's not true because it very well could be. I'm not saying that I don't make some good money on there. I've made the amount of money I make is is growing, but the percentage of my overall business is being pushed down. So there, there's a lot going on, as I said, but the opportunities, the, 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 the fact that if you get shut down on one site, you've got other opportunities. You've just got to be able to cover yourself. That's why, you know, Ink Frog and, and what's the other one? That's six bit or whatever it's called. I don't know, Venomo or Venomo or whatever they are called. There's, there's four or five other places that do that too. Again, I research all that based on their pricing structure and, and what I can do with it and what works best and all that kind of stuff. Let me get to the the the. Let me move to the uh, the chat. Maybe I've missed some of it for yapping too long. Um, Duncan pointed out uh, that somebody was charged on their eBay bill. I don't know if this is somebody from from Australia. Duncan's from Australia or from here in the U.S. or U.K. or where it may be from, but. It, he's stating, and I don't doubt this because I've seen some weird, weird posts, and people do send me copies of their bills from time to time. Um, for eighteen hundred dollars, and eBay couldn't tell them what it is. If anybody else has been charged with something on their bill, but it doesn't tell you what it is, can you please let me know, <clears throat> or or anything along that line? Um, at, in some cases, I've used stuff like that in videos just to call attention to it. The last video I did and the last live one, I just I did that random live one talking about item specifics. I got a lot of grief and hate for, for, for that video, which I figured I probably would. But if I'm giving out the information that's saved people now, for sure, money that they caught that they wouldn't have looked at in their bill, the video was a help, in my opinion. Um, again, the, there's, there's tons of charges. I caught it on my own account right now. So without a doubt, eBay moves your items without telling you from one category that you have free add-ons like the Gallery View Plus to a category where you're charged an extra dollar. For every item they do that to. I've had it happen, 100%. There's no doubt about it that that's happening. And eBay isn't warning you that you're paying the new fee. Now, there is a warning that on the that it could be charged in some categories. But you you put it in one category and eBay changed the category. That, that should violate that aspect of it because... They didn't. You don't know that it's going to be moved. So, again, it, the the whole issue is brought up because that's a serious issue to me. Anytime someone's misleading me on cost, price, or what's already been agreed upon, I, I get a little irked about that. Um, I actually got an account shut down on eBay just the other day for extremely misleading um, uh, um, stuff. Uh, I don't do any of that kind of stuff lightly, but it was something I personally bought. And um, they sent me a notice after I left them negative feedback for showing me one item and sending me something else. So um, anyway, I don't appreciate that. I don't take it lightly. I go to the extreme, some people may say, by reporting it. But when I'm expecting something, I pay more for an item because I'm expecting one item, but get something of lesser value, I find an issue with that. So I've had people say, well, you shouldn't report other sellers. But if, if you really care about the site... You wouldn't want somebody else violating the rules because when the rules are violated and eBay cracks down on it, they don't just crack down on the rule breakers at one point. They crack down on everybody. So if we catch it before they do it, you know, anyway. Oh, one one more thing I got to tell everybody here if you haven't heard. eBay has given permission in UK for the government, the, the British government, to openly get to access to the eBay site and remove listings that they deem violate the law or more or issues like that, that may be illegal. They didn't announce it anywhere on the platform. My guess is they're probably doing that here in the U S and just didn't tell us could be the user agreement pretty much lets them do that without giving notice. Um, there actually was a nice article I had out on that exact topic, which I've sent some feelers out to a couple people from a couple other sites, which I'm hoping maybe they'll be able to enlighten me. And if there is anything going on with that, I may have a tech site come on um, to discuss some of that. Uh, just FYI. I, again, I do a lot of stuff in the background that you may have no clue. And I do talk to other channels. I don't put a lot of people on my channel. Dom's one of the ones you, you know I have. But um, I look into stuff because it's my business. And if something can affect my business, I need to know about it. Again, I do volume and we've got other stuff going on. So Most of the people who sent me their invoices on extra charges, 
and from what I see were charges for eBay's international standard delivery. This was in the past month or so um, because they bill you for those or were billing you for those. So you it, it shows up as you were charged and a lot of people are thinking that they were already collected the day that they do it, but it shows up on your monthlies on the invoice because it's an invoice charge, like an upcharge, just like the Gallery Plus view, which everybody who's had items moved from one category to another by eBay needs to check their invoice for because chances are if they did move something and you're using a Gallery Plus view, which I use for everything that it's free on, you're going to be charged the extra dollar. And eBay's not going to tell you that. There's no notices in anybody's mailbox whatsoever that I've seen at all, nor have I seen that posted anywhere else other than like e-commerce bites or a couple other of the blog posts that talk about eBay in general. So anyway, let's get down here. I know I ramble a lot. Oh, I see again, Duncan's in the house. I got Cynthia Parker, Mitzi Reseller. Welcome also. And then I did thought I saw Dom. Hey, Dom. Again, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, Primetime Treasure Hunter Channel. I will be on there. We're going to be going head-to-toe on um, item, specific, uh, item specifics. But we're going to be addressing it from uh, partially to from what I think we discussed. Hopefully, I'm not out, out speaking what we were discussing. But from the buyer's side, too, because it's a huge issue for the buyers now from what I've seen. So anyway, and I've had people address some of these changes to me, buyers, wondering about the screwness of what I got in my listing. That's something that eBay did. And I can confirm that as well, too. I didn't change any of my used condition statements to like new on 1,100 of my listings. I would have never changed 11. They changed 1,100 of my listings that weren't even technically included in the ones they were supposed to be requiring item specifics. I wouldn't have known had people I started to get three in one day wondering why my condition box said like new on stuff. And I, I literally had to spend... 20, 30 minutes to, to edit them. I swore that in the hub, you used to be able to uh, edit 500 listings at a time. Now it's only 200. If anybody else remembers that, I swear it used to allow you to edit 500 at a time. I could only get in one specific category, it would only, no matter what I try to do, it would only let me do the 200 that were on the screen at the time. And then every time I did it, I had an, I, we should have recorded it because it took me like an hour to bulk edit those, and it should never take that long just to bulk edit because every single time I went to edit those from like new to where it should have been, I had to, one of them arrowed out, arrowed out every single time. This one can't be updated. So it would uh, process the 199 that it was processing. That one would hang, and instead of I say, yeah, I want to fix it, instead of doing that, it would go back out, and I'd go right back to the editing screen. So I don't know if it fixed it or not. I didn't put anything else in so I had to go redo that one and then it timed out again every time I did this for what would that be that would be five six times I had to, six different batches of 200 I needed to do so every time I did that it did the same thing and since it didn't complete the the single individual one even on the second time when I went and did the second 200 grouping it would say would you like to continue or look at the one you're already working on the one I was working on was that one that it kept timing out on every single time it went in a big circle every time for an hour and I figured by the time I sit here and call eBay and they get into it, I could have fixed it even with the longer time it took to do this. It's just ridiculous. There's there's no investment from what I see into the site. That $5.1 billion they invested in stock buybacks didn't do anything for us. All it did is line the pockets of the people who don't know what they're doing in the first place. Again, my opinion, we know what they did with the $5.1 billion. That's a fact, though. So anyway, hey, Bob, how are you doing? I'm still working on that for you with the, the search results, Bob, just FYR. Carissa Powell, how are you doing? North Carolina, I've been there myself. Thank you, Dom. Thank you, Dom. I'm trying to call attention to it. I asked to write that article. That was one beyond what I normally would do for, for, for e-commerce bites, but I asked to write an extra one specifically on item uh, specifics just because of the nightmare that it's caused for both us and your buyers. On top of the issues with buyers not being able to pay, I still hear the complaints about that. On top of eBay canceling items the minute that they were paid for by the buyer, um, that happened a whole bunch of times. I've actually talked to people who that happened to. Um, and then the very next day after they fixed it, again, every day, 39, 40, what, we're up to 41 or 42 days in a row. Every day I've done something on an eBay, I've had multiple errors every single day of the week. 
every single day for over 40 days in a row, I've been writing down every time there's an error that I'm timed out or I got to reload a page or something doesn't work right. Every single day, every single day. Again, that goes back to the state of the reselling world. If, if I'm done with dealing with this, this BS with eBay, I'll be okay. Don't drop off if you're not in that state. Don't do anything stupid or rash. Don't get that angry with eBay that you're going to cut off your own revenue. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you folks, if you need the money, don't do it. Put up with it if you have to, even if it, you despise this, the fact feeding your wife, your kids, or putting a, a roof over your house is the most important aspect of it in my book. You know, I've bitten my pride working for people many, many times as much as I just wanted to tell them to, pardon me, go F themselves and give them the finger and walk out. You know, I, I haven't done it. I have done it before when I had something else going. I threw my keys at a boss once before and told him to just take it and do whatever he wanted. I ain't going to tell you the words I said, but I don't cuss very often, but I, I have done that to a boss on many occasions, even ones that I was still working for after I did it because I was in the right. But anyway, Gail Make, uh, I'm sorry, I missed some. I did. Angela Black, how are you doing? Watch from Southeast PA, been through there myself. When I escorted a huge box of vintage postcard to the thrift store, Found some thrift store. That's a good good pickup at a thrift store. It's probably a mom pa or a smaller thrift store would be my guess. I don't think I've ever seen but maybe four or five postcards at at the Savers before they closed down. I did see some at the mom and pas. I see them there quite often though. Um, Gail uh, Maycar, how are you doing? Good evening. Hey, Crystal L. Walters, Walton with Crystal. How are you doing? Uh, a past prize winner, uh, Black Crystal Dice. How are you doing as well? Good evening. Good to have you back in the house. Marjorie, the stuffologist. Yeah, the, the article, again, I I think about those when I'm writing them. And I try to put in relevant information and facts with, with what goes into something like that. I don't try to just dog on somebody. People say I'm hating eBay and I'm, you, you're crazy about the thing going after them. This is a business. And my comments are related to the the loss of part of my business or loss of revenue or time i'm losing so it's a business factor anything that that's done without taking that in consideration i personally wouldn't do that to somebody if they're working for me i'd i'd work it in there i'm not just going to dive somebody with that i'm not going to do something without considering that there's people out there that may have hundreds of thousands of listing that they would have no way to fix i'm not you know, they're they're hurting the biggest. I know a lot of folks. I I I just I don't want this to sound bad in any way, shape, or form. The the larger stores that have one person running them that's taken years of doing this are the ones that are going to be hurt a lot because they're pretty much shut down if they've got a deadline and they got to fix a hundred thousand listings, two hundred thousand listings, and they're they've been doing it themselves. The only reason they have those many listings is because they've been listing for ten, fifteen, twenty years on the same account. And there's lots of people who do that. So when you get up to there and you're thrown for a loop and you have nobody working for you, you can't just jump somebody in there and tell them this is what, you, how are you going to find somebody that quick? So a lot of the bigger sellers are are the ones that may be able to do nothing else but that. I, I Again, I know it's hurting a lot of the smaller sellers too. Don't don't get me wrong. It's hurting them both to the almost the same equality because it's it's just a, such a drastic thing. If you got 400 listings and and you're new and you're you're not up on all all what's what or you're trying to understand it, them throwing you for a loop and throwing in that you got to go now edit all 400 listings again. You know, some of the comments where I could have listed those 400 items over again from scratch in the same time I, it took me to go back in and figure out all the the ridiculous fake poop item specifics. I posted, and it's on here on, I, I don't know what kind of tab it is on here. Maybe it's a messaging tab. An uh, actual screenshot in the category, um, it's paper collectibles for uh, holidays. It was a hol collectibles holidays, and then it was cards, I think. In that category, listing for item specifics is the word fake poop. And below that is fake snake, and then floam is right below that. Now, it, it wasn't like a ton of lit, ton of item specifics. It was still only like 20 or 30 of them, and those were in that list. It wasn't like just a whole huge assortment of, of stuff. It was very selective still, but, but fake poop. And I had to get a screenshot because I'm like, no way. So at this point, I've got like 40 or 50 now screenshots of crazy. I might put together a, a little video of all the crazy item specifics that they got going out there just because they're, they've just gotten insane. I mean totally unrelated items but anyway let's get back over here i know i'm rambling again uh where are we at here um true rarities welcome hey michelle how are you doing good evening back to you as well 
Marty in the house too. Hey, how are you doing, Marty? Jiminy Flippet, he's got another channel too. I've watched some of his videos. I would recommend you give him a chance. I've talked to Marty for quite some time. Very good guy, honest, sincere. Uh, so again, give him a chance there. You can uh, pop to his. I, I I don't know if you can still do the three dots and take him to the side. I don't. I haven't even checked it out. Kind of hate to click in the box because a lot of times YouTube acts up. But again, if you haven't checked him out, give him a shot out there. Um, He's a good guy. He's trying hard. He does good content, too. So uh, let's see where we at. Kevin Hawthorne. Good. Well, oh, Lakeland. I've been to Lakeland. When you go down Highway 27 in Lakeland, I can't think what that main strip was. We took a right into, into Lakeland, and there used to be a thrift store on the main strip out there that we used to score at a lot. Um, I lived in mini, uh, Mineola back then, um, off of Highway 27 on the lake. Um, I think it's it's right connected to Claremont, basically. But it used to be a massive good store out there. We used to always score out that way. Lakeland from, uh, from us back then was about 42 minutes. I think that's I think that's somewhere in that range. Or am I mis mixing up Leesburg? I'll have to think about that one. Maybe I'm mixing up Leesburg. It's been a long time since I've been in Florida, but anyway. Rare Brains Garage. How are you? Or, yeah, Brain is Brains Garage. Greetings from Denver. I've been to Denver. I flew into the Mile High Airport when I worked for Einstein Brothers, and I spent some time in Golden and Denver. Um, we went all over around there. Col uh, Colorado Springs. Pamela Saban. Sunday Funday, how are you doing? Good evening. Uh, Shelly Middlebrooks, welcome. Galveston, uh, Texas. We have relatives. I worked in Dallas for a little while, too. Four Einstein Brothers bagels. I filled in for regional... Joe the Breadman Resort Channel, how are you doing? I got a booth at an antique mall today in Ellington, Bradenton, Florida. Additionally, from selling online, what is your opinion selling that way? I, I, I don't want to be the bearer of my personal opinion on that, but I would not go into a mall today ever um, personally. Uh, I've done the mall years of our life. I did flea market setups. Um, I go to malls and pick, and if I can go to a mall and pick, I wouldn't put my items in a mall. It's just personally me. I would run a garage sale and, and get rid of it. The last garage sale I ran, I, I'm, we made like nine thousand dollars in three days at a garage sale. Getting rid of, we bought some bulk furniture locally, really cheap from somebody. I sold a lot of the stuff that I couldn't sell on eBay. Just threw it out on the table. A lot of people, I guess, assumed that it was like for... I didn't announce it as anything, estate sale, just big garage sale, antiques, collectibles, advertising. And we made like $9,000. That's what I would do as opposed to going into an antique mall. Most of the time after I've... I did it before eBay was around and I also did it with eBay. And most of the time after eBay was around, I barely made enough over and above my, my, um, my uh, slot fees. In all honesty, and, and it's been that way for a while, especially right now, the traffic isn't there because of the pandemic. Again, I'm not trying to be, maybe it'd be work great for you, but I personally, in, in our area and anywhere around here, I personally wouldn't do it. Most of the time when I go to go to an antique mall, a large chunk of the dealers I can make money off of. I, my business started going to antique malls and making money off of, off of, off of uh, the dealers that brought the stuff in. And that's why knowing more than everybody else makes you more money. Because I can go in there and go, oh, I don't know why they got this out there. It's worth 100 bucks. Um, I went to meet somebody just the other day, and I, there's a, a thrift store that it's a small mom and pa. And I don't go in there very much, but I went in there. I got a Tom Tom with the case, all the accessories, works perfect. It's up to date for five bucks in the case. You know, I mean, that's the kind of thing that's that's about the only thing i see in 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 stuff like that i i just i don't i i personally wouldn't do it i personally wouldn't recommend it in my my personal opinion just because of all those factors and stuff and i think the the local markets from the ones i've talked to around here i think that it's going to stay slower um post pandemic than what it was pre-pandemic in my opinion just from looking at it there's already several that have closed around here um, and I know the ones around here are offering like some incredible discounts trying to get you in there. So uh, I, I would I would be seriously watching and be safe and watching your, your funds in there. Again, no disrespect. I, this is a business. This is a business uh, conversation. So that's my business opinion. I liked being in antique malls, though, so don't get me wrong. It goes right back to me talking about I don't source like everybody else anymore. And I do miss that to, to some extent, but that's the, the life I lead. So I am... 
I am very standoffish on, on having any presence in brick and mortar in any way, shape, or form these days, in all honesty, other than a garage sale. That's it. I would probably do a flea market if it was like a weekend thing and just set up and sell it, be done. I mean, I've always done thousands of dollars on any one of those I've ever done. Um, that would be my personal opinion. Because if you're going to get cherry picked somewhere and you're giving them a percentage, you might as well get cherry picked at, an, uh, at a flea market or your own garage sale where you can set the price and don't have to give any percentages to anybody else. You know, that, that's that's my take on it. Again, no no disrespect to, to Joe or anything else like that, but that's just my solid opinion here. She sells by, by Sue. Well, glad to see you in the house, Sue. I wish the best, of course. My for joy to the world was my first forty-five. Well, I I actually got the album. I would have to think about um, what my first forty-five was. Um, geez. Oh, I I know what it was. Um, Save me by Cinderella. That that was my first forty-five, and I remember why I bought it because it was a special insert in the 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 forty-five picture sleeve that came with it opened up to a poster of Cinderella. Um, that's one of my that's one of my favorite songs by them. Um, um, Not your fool, uh, somebody save me and shake me. Um, Gypsy Road is okay, but I, I'm into all kinds of music, so I'm fond memories. Every, I can relate pretty much any any part, any time, any experience in my life to a song. And all that stuff. I'm driven by music. Um, I know I've got issues mentally, but I, that's me. I can. If somebody brings up an event, the first thing that pops in is I hear the song or the music that was playing every time. Um, Sue, too. If if I was serious, if you do ever need anything, reach out to. Sue's got a channel, too, as well. I have not, unfortunately, been to many other channels, but Sue has always been a very, very uh, nice person. I've always wished nothing but the best for Sue. Um, are you a collector? Good evening as well. Good to have you back in. Pink Eagle, I live in Bradenton. I used to step... Bradenton, I can give you a bunch of antique... If, if you go to Tarpon Springs on the Sponge Docks, man, I always used to find stuff on there. We used to eat at Louis Pappas's restaurant. I used to stay at the Sandpiper on alternate A1A, or um, alternate... Um, what's that? What's the road out there? I can't think of the name of the road. Alternate... Um, oh, shoot. I can't think of the name of the road. But it was um, it was right there on the coast, and we'd we'd usually get the the side. We get a uh, bucket of little neck clams and some Corona. Me and the wife. We didn't have kids then, but we'd we'd spend the weekends when we worked at Disney. Um, we'd go to Honeymoon Island, uh, Sarasota St. Pete area was where our stomping grounds. Kikino Beach, Longboat Island or Longboat Key. Uh, the sands on Longboat Key are they used to be as white as snow, and when when the wind was blowing and you're moving back across the inner coast or going across the bridge, sometimes the wind the wind would cover the the roads with white sand and it reminded me of being up north with the snow it was just it was neat i liked it i loved living and living in, on the beach and in florida honestly um nicholas tracy i grew up with flea markets and antique malls i grew up with the garage sales and the flea markets kind of faded in when i got a little older i always loved them my mom did go to thrift stores though um, my my father worked and my mom didn't. She did after I was a little older. She started to work as a a nighttime nurse, uh, an LPN, and then a chart nurse RN at a nursing home. Um, very uh, very depressing uh, job, I would have to say. Um, I sometimes had to get dropped off there and stuff. You know, when she, my mom didn't have a babysitter and stuff, so. I got to know a lot of the patients, and it was always sad if somebody passed away, and especially if they were nice. I was a kid, and, and some of the time I was in there, so, you know, you, you get to, they joke around with me as a kid, and it was always sad when somebody passed or something happened, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do that job to save my life, so, and they, she had awful hours, my mom, and she slept the next couple days. She only did it every other weekend, but they didn't have a lot of money. It was, my mom stayed home and helped raise me and my, my brother. We never had you know, daycare or anything else like that. I mean, I'm not criticizing daycare because I know there's many times people won't have an option. Um, we've always tried to, I've always uh, dealt with less money and, you know, stuff and, and just so my wife could stay home. We we both decided it was best to not work, you know, not worry about the money and just worry about, my family's really tight. Anybody who sees us thinks we're weird because we're so, so tight and so, so together on everything. But that's just us. I've just... You know, we've lived in a lot of bad places and we've had a lot of bad experiences and, you know, I'm just, we're, we're a solid family for that. You know, we, we all think similarly and, 
anyway, I don't want to go on to that. That's the conversation's uh, reselling, but you know, that that's 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 my take. But um, I know I probably haven't gotten through hardly any of the feedback. I'm sorry. I grew up in the '90s, but I was still old-fashioned then. Yeah, I've I. When I was, I worked at Michigan, Ohio Publishing Company at 17, and they did the Homes magazines. I did um, the page layouts for them. Back then, they had basic Macintoshes, the real one-color screens, the little tiny, I don't remember what version they, they were. I'd have to think about that, but um, they had those, and all those could do, they couldn't do graphics. All it would do was print out the, the textual blocks, and we'd have to cut them out and then roll the wax on and then mount them on the mock-up sheets, you know, with the blue borders and all that stuff. And I can't remember even what the names of them were. I did the half toning. I did the, 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 uh, uh, foot, uh, the photograph work for that. Sometimes I went out and took photos of houses and stuff. I was 17 when I did that, and uh, that was one of my, um, back in the old day, I was old-fashioned then, and my parents listened to 50s music. And the folks all there were all older than me. I was the youngest person there by like 10, 15 years. And because um, all the graphics guys were there, there were we were our younger people. There was three of us. And I knew every, they listened to the oldies. I knew every single one that came on there. And every time I'd, I, I was joking or would say something about that's such and such. Or, and then they'd try to get me after a while. And I bet you don't know who that is. And I'd like, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know. But that's my parents listen to it. I, the one thing I've always been good at is is music. Now, that's why my master's thesis is on music. Most of my my psychology reports and stuff, uh, psych and, and reports, were all on music and influences and stuff and, and, and stuff like that. Because I'm so... I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with music, too. I'm, everything I do, I'm obsessed with, I have to say. Um, anyway, I, I will have some... So I know I keep saying this. I know things just keep going. I've, I've had a lot of stuff come my way that I never expected, and it's kind of occupied my time. But I've got a lot of video content that's being edited. There's a bunch edited for the other channel. I'm going to be having a major well well videoed well uh, done uh, series coming out i i did shoot yesterday um my whole ufo story so if you're interested in hearing that it is coming out and i'm also going to have another a uh, couple of videos on that same line i'm going to debunk the debunkers on their bs talking about this and that trying to claim that the ufo photos are airplanes and birds and balloons and all that bs stuff i think the name of the one that I, that that just so out there was i think his name is um Mick West, I think. I went and looked at his book on Amazon, and his book's been reported to the publisher for errors and bad photos. And this is the guy with no degree and no science technology who's debunking and trying to say all over Twitter. And I don't know how he's got such a big following, this guy, but I don't believe in conspiracy theories. I don't believe in chemtrails. I don't believe in, in, in most anything in the ghost realm or spiritual or anything else like that. I believe in science. I don't believe in the History Channel. I don't watch Ancient Aliens. I don't go into any of that. I only. I don't believe in crop circles or abductions or any of that stuff. But I saw a UFO, and no one's going to tell me what I saw wasn't what I saw. I know what it did, I, and that was back in like '90. Um, I, I, I'm just bringing this up because I am since 2017, and, and Lieutenant David Fravers. Uh, description of it, I am totally obsessed because his description fits exactly what I saw. Every single aspect of it to the T. It was almost like I I dropped what I was doing when I heard it. I was just thinking it's just another BS story and blah, 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 but I know what I saw and, and I'm not crazy. I'm not some psycho. I don't believe in any of the Bigfoot or anything else like that. I'm not saying there's a possibility of some some creature like the Sealy Cant was was extinct, they thought, for three hundred million years and they're still around. But I'm not into I don't watch any shows like that. I don't watch any of that stuff. This the one I saw was actually featured on some other show. I had no clue on we found out a year later. Anyway, the whole it's all in a video. I've already recorded it. Somebody's editing it, I think, possibly right now. Um, it's a long, it's going to be a longer video. I'm going to debunk. I'm, I'm so, I, I'm obsessed with that. Everything I do, I'm obsessed with. But I'm, I'm honestly obsessed with that. Most of my time has gone into looking at and reading uh deck logs of the ships themselves that were released from Freedom of Information Act. I've got a whole video that I, that's almost together on the USS Omaha incident. Um, I, I I don't want to just waste time on that in this series. I'm probably losing people on that, but um, uh, it, I think a lot of people just don't know what's going on and aren't reading into it and are trusting people. They're saying it's all bunk, and they're, they're, they're going to be rudely awakened when... 
let's just put it this way. These same exact things have been going on since World War II, and you all know what they're called because there's a major rock band. The Foo Fighters are named after the UFOs that our pilots and every pilot during World War II saw were called Foo Fighters. And they're the exact same things that we're still seeing. The government's already admitted that these go back decades, the exact same reporting prior to any country having the technology. What I saw in 1990 was not possible at that point. There's no, I'm not an idiot. I can see what's in front of my eyes less than 100 feet away, that it's not some plane. Any, I don't want to go into it here, but it, it was, it's, 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 it's changed my life in, in many different ways on my thinking. So anyway, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what you think of it. I thought for a year on putting this up there because of the, the bad, the, the comments people get. I'm, I'll be a everybody thinks anymore i think most people on here know that but i know what i saw i know what lieutenant david fravor who was the top graduating top gun pilot in his class has flown for 20 years what he said matches to the t i wouldn't have described it the way he did but the minute he said it i'm like oh my god that's exactly i literally dropped what i was doing when i when i heard that on there and i, I from that point on i've been obsessed with with what's going on with the ufo stuff um i'm not i've never looked at it until that came out i don't pass up on it i talked to bob lazar not even knowing that he had anything to do with ufos um so my paths have crossed many times right patterson here they were supposedly stored at and anyway i'm not a, i'm not a nut job but i i i'm obsessed with what i saw anyway i'm gonna move on i know i know i'm i'm rambling I do that a lot, as you know. Auction web, there's another one. Yeah, I think that was what eBay was called. Gary Stray, Stranger. I'm sure I probably messed that up. Nicole Tracy. Uh, pick and Pack and Pressman, welcome. I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, Diane's Orchids, welcome. Our local drive-in was our flea market on the weekends. Same here. They've had local drive-ins here. I'll give you a hint. When the last local drive-in in the last town i lived in went down they were closing it i went to the auction i was able to get movie posters 35 millimeter prints of an entire films just a massive amount of stuff that they had stored in one of their outbuildings some of it was trash because it was left unattended but all those old drive-ins if, if they haven't been sold or they haven't messed with the, the stuff in there all the ones around here i've already checked but find out who which real estate company has them and check and see if they've emptied it out and see if the owners might want to make some money by selling some of the equipment in there i'm giving you a big instant inner circle uh thing there i've done that with other people for quite some time there is again i worked at movie theaters before i, I my boss got me into some of the the big uh, flea market shows because of him and he was the the projectionist and the um, exhibitioner for the town so if if you have drive-in theaters they're they're really good sources Again, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that are watching that may be thinking about that. They're really good sources. Buildings that have been closed down for years, I go after. Especially if I know what was in them. We've been lucky enough. I, we found in Mississippi two different closed down antique places that the owners passed away. The stuff had been sitting in there for years. It's like 20 plus years. No one's looked at it. The door closed the day, the day after he passed away. The family never did anything with it. A lot of buildings were like that in there. We walked in and picked, I mean, I we've made some money from stuff like that. Businesses that went under like 10 years ago, the buildings never changed hands and finally they're selling it or they're able to sell it. I always try and crank those ads out from the local news and stuff, newspapers and stuff like that. Those have been ones. I've talked about a haul I did on a five-story building downtown here in Toledo on Jefferson Street. And that's been, we made... I, I'm, I don't want to exaggerate, but just the letterpress letters alone from that, we made like $4,200. And I, I had at max invested into all that stuff, other than, say, the 16 hours or so of time. Again, I was having fun because we were, it was a huge building, just full of stuff. I mean, I may have 100 bucks invested into that, that pickup, and that's $30,000 or better probably from a downtown five-story building that no one else wanted to drive down to. Most people won't go down and thrift or won't go down to sales when it's just like a building or something like that clearing out in downtowns. I've learned my I've learned by, that that's the case. Most people don't want to worry about parking down there. I was even hesitant. It would have been worth me getting a ticket every day to go down there, though. Let's just put it that way. Um, but that's part of what I do. I don't source like everybody else. That's that's why. So you know, again, that I'm giving you another one there. That's that's why I don't. 
I target. I go after things. I target stuff. Even if it's not listed, I'll track down a real estate. I, again, I work for the Michigan Ohio Publishing Company. We, we did real estate. I know the real estate people around here. So I'll give you another one there. I'll give you some some insider secrets on stuff. That's, that's, my, that's my life. That's what I do stuff like. So I don't go to garage sales, thrift stores, or antique malls really anymore. If all that shut down, I just start going back to the antique malls. I guarantee you, every time I've went to the big antique malls here in town, every single time I've scored a couple hundred bucks, three hundred range or better, every time profit. So anyway, let me let me pop down. Uh, Beauty sounds. My first LP was the Moog showing my age. Um, Moog music. If you don't know what that is, that synthesizer. And I do like Moog. Um, Trying to think of somebody who's famous. I'd give you a name you've never heard of. I won't go to Moog, but type in Moog and listen to some Moog. It's a, it's a, Moog is a, a name of a synthesizer itself. It's like a big giant keyboard machine kind of thing. So anyway, um, that's a genre too, if you didn't know. It's just right along the lines of you got lounge, Moog. Um, you've got elevator, you could call it too. But all that kind of thing I really like too. Exotica is one of my favorites too. I like everything. I like anything i mean i'm not a big fan though on disco i'll have to say but you dropped a bomb on me by um i'll have to say not all disco uh what's the name of the group the spinners i think it's probably not the spinners i can't think of the name of the group uh let me think somebody else probably popped in there but he'd be so far down Derek wolf how are you doing mr Diggs deals digging out a profit well hello how are you doing from the uk a lot of boot sales over in the UK. I, I always am fast. I, I, we had some very good friends from uh, the UK when we worked at Disney. And my wife talks to somebody from Ireland quite often that we worked with at Disney too. Um, I've had lifelong friends from working at Disney for 10 plus years. We still, we still almost on a daily, uh, daily aspect interact with people from Disney. So anyway, still have friends that work there. I still get stuff sent to us from Disney like pins. So anyway. Um, uh, we like the way you bros talk. There's, there's, um, uh, Crystal talking about that. Uh, let's see where we at. Two rarities. Well, again, I'm going to be on Dom's show. So again, hopefully I didn't speak out of, out of choice saying that, but I thought I'd give it a little push for the show for tomorrow. No offense to Dom. Uh, let's see here. Gary Straymore. Most of the fun is still on the front end with the thrill of seeking out bargains. Yeah, see, that's why I say my life has changed for the reselling aspect of it because I don't go out and do any of those random sources anymore. I'm going after... I, I like to go to businesses. I like to buy out business stuff. If, if I can get into a building that's been closed for 10 years and they used to be a printer's office, I love printer's offices. I've showed up at auctions for shoe stores, uh, like um, uh, shoe repair shops, because most of the time they have old equipment there, vintage stuff. It works still. They'll re it's cheaper for them to do that. If you know that kind of stuff, you can make money at it. Shoe stores around here, three have closed in probably the last two years. So, you know, again, people ask, well, what do you look for? What do you do? What do you, this, this is the kind of stuff I do, plus uh, dozens and dozens of other things besides that. But that's why I say that the, the reselling world, I couldn't do that back in the day. I would have never thought about that. I wouldn't have a, a, a venue to get rid of big machinery. I wouldn't want to sell that on eBay. But nowadays, there's so many options. There's businesses. In fact, I know someone here that just buys used uh equipment like big like um, uh, machinery that we're talking like 20 foot long factory machines and stuff here they i won't mention the name but they own a fairly good chunk of stuff and they'll buy it they'll fix it up they'll clean it up sometimes they'll repaint it and stuff and then they'll either lease it out or they'll sell it off and they make a pretty darn good penny but they they've got the money to invest into it of course we're talking twenty thousand dollar machines that they can turn around and spend five grand on and maybe make a profit of twenty five thousand a pop it's not a quick thing they might might take them two weeks to recondition one machine but you got two people i mean i've seen the breakdown and i've seen the labor breakdown and the cost ratio and and, and stuff anyway i'm i'm not so on numbers i I, I hate to keep rambling on stuff like that, but it, that's what I like. I like numbers and stuff. Yeah, I wished I had... I, I love I love going out and sourcing. I, I really do, but I, I lose money going out and sourcing like that. I lose... For me to go out and source at a garage sale or thrift store, I am honestly losing money. Unless I find something really, really good, a couple of them, every time I'm out. And I, I, this just doesn't happen around here. I would be starving to death if I had to do that around here. I don't know 
how a lot of the resellers survive in this this local area personally i i, I don't know i mean i don't go to a, i don't go out to many so maybe there's still good chefs showing up but no i've never been lucky enough in all the years i used to go out and randomly source around here again i'm not criticizing them because that's what i did for a very very long time 10 you know well eight years or whatever we did that that's how you got to do it you know until you get the connections and and I'm not afraid to ask. I'm not afraid to knock on a door. I'm not afraid to cold call somebody out of nowhere. I'm not afraid to call the county or go down to the county and ask who owns a building. I'm not afraid to figure out and, and contact that person out of the blue and, and hope that they return my call or something. You know, I usually make them an offer that I'd be willing to give you some cash if you're sitting on a building and you've got all the bills. <coughs> I always try and figure out how long the building's been sitting and if the person looks like maybe they don't have a ton of money or maybe they would be prone especially if the building is currently for sale if there's a for sale sign on it i almost always can get an in to get them some money because whoever buys the building isn't going to probably care about the crap inside of it so again that's that's another op uh, obstacle that a lot of people can't get past they're afraid to make those cold calls or i don't i can get turned on 100 times i'm still going to make that 101 phone call let's just put it that way um there are no other sites for this business model. Um, that's not true at all. I saw quite a few collectibles on, on Amazon. I saw quite a few collectibles on other platforms as well. So that's not true. It just depends on what you sell. eBay is not the only factor in my book. Again, they're they're well they're in the 40 40 percent range of our income. So you know I don't uh, they're not the only place in the book anymore. If you sell clothing. I know people that I know quite a few people that do more on clothing on Poshmark than they ever have on eBay, and they've been up for a while, so it's not like just some random thing. So I'm again, it depends on what you're selling. You know, I can sell vintage records on Discogs very easily without any problem. I can sell them on Amazon very easy without any problem. I can sell my photos on Amazon. I can sell um, cylinder records on Amazon. I can sell anything related to uh, historical items on Amazon. I can sell anything related to entertainment collectibles on Amazon. I can sell vintage used action figures on Amazon. I can sell secondhand items on Amazon any day of the week. Um, there's a couple names that I can't type in there, but I sell used Lego figures on Amazon before without any problem whatsoever. I sell new Legos on Amazon. I am on gated. I do have an invoice. I have bought in bulk from a wholesaler. So again, no one can say that eBay is the only one with that model. That's, that's totally not true. Um, if anything, eBay's model holds people back a little bit because of the way the API is and the, the lack of best offer options on HIP. I can do best offers on HIP, but I can't, even with their API, I can still do a best offer. But if I'm on Shopify and want to use eBay's API, I can't use best offer. The phone, you can't even list stuff on eBay. I mean, I'm not going to argue over the point, but there's, there's, there's enough compilation of sites you can put together that could equal your ebay if that's really so what you wish to do that's that's the point of this that's why the world isn't the same when it was just ebay ebay had that monopoly but the reason they're number three now instead of number one which they used to be is because they've lost prevalence they've lost faith in the buyers and the sellers and they're alienating more and more people as they do these stupid uh, decisions. I mean, it, it's that's that's the way it is. I don't. You can say whatever you want, but that's what I see. I've been on the site for too long. So have all the other hundreds of people that I talk to almost on, you know, a weekly basis. So um, let me see here. Um, again, I would rather eBay be great. I would rather it be the best place. I would rather that because it would make my life so much easier. Wouldn't have the headaches. Um, let's see here. Hey, Mike, how you doing? My very first person I ever talked to there, Mike, a very, very good, very friendly guy. I've talked to him going back three years now. Mike's a really good guy. Um, radio man, radio tubes, the whole works. Good to see you in, Mike. Garrett Anderson, Farmer's Market, how are you doing? Emmy Goring, how are you doing from Texas? Welcome. The book pedal, you're the best. Well, thank you very kindly. Welcome, welcome in. Uh, Mitzi Rio says, I'm not sure where I know I'm far behind on the chat. Let me see if I can catch up maybe a little bit. I love watching the American channels as a Brit. I learned from you guys. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Control, greed, and profit. That's all that rules it. That is correct. I don't, I don't, Meg, I think was 
proud that eBay was doing well. I, I, you can say whatever you want about Meg, but I felt like I was welcomed fully, 100% onto the site. I felt like it was a community. Um, and again, that's just like them killing the community boards. I saw the notice on why they're killing the community boards. My take is they'll probably look like Facebook is my guess from, from going forward. But they said all these people have this community and the groups on there and nobody uses a bunch of them. That's because that all pretty much stopped after Meg and all that stuff. A lot of the stuff that I see has been so drastically different. With Meg, you felt like you belonged with eBay, uh, in my opinion. Um, she was the CEO, if you don't know who I'm talking about. Anybody who's been on for a length of time knows the Meg years. I would say that was probably the best time. Megan before... Uh, it was was like fun. I mean, really fun. I, even though I was making a ton of money, it was the coolest thing because it, it was the hottest thing going on at that time, and and I could never get in. I was obsessed. I'm obsessed with everything I'm into. I don't. I I can't tell you otherwise. I mean, um, uh, where are we at? Rose Smith, please create a big form that takes it back to the days. I would never want to step into the realm of creating a, a platform truthfully. I would rather work with ones that are out there that aren't quite that big yet and then help them any way I can, I guess is my point. Because uh, look, I, I've been on other platforms for quite some time. Um, I, I'm not I'm not promoted to say this, so so don't this this is this is the only reason I've decided to to help promote hip in any way, shape, or form. Again, I've I've had eBay contact me and ask if I would be interested in having people come on my channel and and speak and ask questions and all this stuff. All those people are, are PR people. Nobody is anything else other than the PR people that I talk to when you meet. And I, you can't tell me anything otherwise. I worked in corporate America. I know how corporate America works. I know the people who are PR in my company. I knew the vice president. I knew the owner of Einstein Brothers at one time as well, too. So, I mean, I've talked to people. The the owner, the creator, the CEO of, of HIP, I talked to him on a chat for quite some time. And and he's a collector himself in the vintage and comic books and stuff too. He's a, he's got his own store of that stuff. He started from scratch. He's invested his time. He's been doing this for years. He was honest. He was sincere. He's the first person from any platform that's ever offered me what I would. He gave me his financial numbers. I mean, he, he nobody. I didn't ask for it. He was he was very upfront, very open. I didn't feel like I was being fed any form of misleading or marketing statement now he did have a his his head of marketing was in it was in on um, there it was two people maybe there's more i don't know i don't really care but the, there was two people i talked to i don't want to give out any names but um and i'm actually going to be talking to to one of them next week before um that too but every part about what the conversation was 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 anything I had a question for? He had an answer, one that was legit. He didn't like feed me. Everything about the experience, everything about my year plus experience using the platform. The I I, I I am I I am impressed with it, and I think anybody knows out there. I'm not impressed with much at all these days, but from from the fact that this guy has an IT background, from the fact that he knows collectibles. And that eBay, right this minute, in my opinion, is ripping off part of his his business structure, the card scanning on eBay. He's been doing that with comic books for a while. Now eBay's coming out with it. Again, he, you can't copyright the ability to do certain things, but they're copying off people like him now. You know, so I, I have more faith in this single individual person than I do in all the management at eBay, just because of the sheer openness that, that I was... Um, allowed to hear from the guy running the company and hip isn't just one it's, he's got three different platforms and they've got millions of items on there so again i'm i would whether i'm dealing or talking with him or i'm help helping push out some three month services or whatever i would be talking about the platform no matter what i have been for a year this is part he his his platform is part of my business it has made us a decent share of money to pay months worth of my, our our bills so you know there, there's options besides ebay there's options that can grow in a relatively short period of time there's options that are available to people if if don't think that you're stuck with just one site. That's the point. And again, I'll tell you again, don't 
dump your stuff off eBay until you've got backup to cover up the loss of those. If you're not in a state, our state or somebody else's state, where you can afford to do that, don't do it. Don't do it to your business. Don't don't lose money. Don't give away income that's coming in. I would never cut a revenue stream unless another one would offer me a bigger source of revenue. So anyway, I know I've been rambling. Uh, if you haven't hit the like button, I've got well over 300 people in-house and we've had for pretty much most of the conversation. Please hit that thumbs up there if you haven't. It's 128 now. And as I said, we've had hundreds of people in here for most of the conversation today. I know I'm rambling. It's not a rant, so to speak. The, 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 the whole atmosphere of reselling has changed. We're going to end it in just a few minutes. I know I usually ramble and talk too much. Um, either, there's just so many opportunities. Don't, don't cut yourself off from the revenue stream now. Don't give up on eBay yet until you've got something else to take its place or multiple somethings else. As I said, I, I may not be able to make the exact amount I am on eBay if I decided to just give it up or something, but I could come pretty darn close. And the lack of... It, I spend more time on eBay than anywhere else. If I got that time back, the difference in the money I may lose because I might have to sell something a little cheaper, I'd probably still make more because I'd be able to do more with my time. I shouldn't have to spend two hours to do some simple thing on eBay. I shouldn't have to do that every single day. I shouldn't have to go check out somebody's computer because eBay aired out every single day of the week. I, I shouldn't have to do that. And HIP's a small site. You got an IT guy who created, I have never, ever, ever in more than a year, I'd have to go back. Maybe I've been on there two years. I don't even, I'd have to really go back and look. It's just been part of my business. I, I can't think of a single solitary day, hour, minute that my listings were down, that I got an error message. Um, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about headaches. I'm thinking about... Again, if, if I free up the time I'm not using dealing with BS, I could make more money in that time. So if I lose a little bit, I could take up the slack and bring it up somewhere else. I could just expand and do something else that I just haven't done and I put on the back burner just because of that. I, I got 6,000 comic books here. I could start listing those and do a big comic book thing uh, on HIP or somewhere else. Again, don't don't you're not tied to something, but don't just keep going along with it like this is all you got. Make sure you have other... <coughs> feelers out there eggs in other baskets so again if you're you're to your wits end with something whether it's amazon whether it's ebay whether it's etsy have another backup i'm not just trying to talk about ebay that could go for any one of these sites as i said i, I somebody i know just today was shut down on amazon for no explanation and they'd been up there for six years they were doing 5600 or thereabouts i think it was 57 i think their last screenshot was uh, 5700 a month take home basically off of it you know, and all of a sudden they're shut down. Now, they, they had other business, though, so they're not going to be desolate. But, I mean, it, the point is that you never know what's coming down the road. The world we're in, the, the reselling market itself today is so broad, so opportunistic. If you're willing to put yourself out there and take a chance that you may fail at something, you've got... the. I, I've said this before. The world is your oyster to some extent. I started off out of college with nothing. I mean, we were pretty much broke. We we went through all of our savings and 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 we come from there. I didn't have I didn't ask for help from anybody. I didn't no family member gave us a dime, none of us. We didn't take a dime from any single person whatsoever from zero. But we we did it through through eBay. Again, I, I owe eBay all that as well too. And that's part of the reason I haven't just jumped off the platform. The site, the 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 idea is still there somewhere, buried in a uh, big chunk of, of um, rich, privileged power of the those running it who haven't a clue on what they're doing anymore. But um, again, I, all they care about is pleasing Wall Street. And Wall Street wouldn't care if the company went under as long as they made a fortune doing so, in my book, because that's what they do. V uh, vulture capitalists and, and stuff like that, too, which is basically they forced other companies I, it, it's, it's just a big old mess and I'm, I'm I'm we're to the point where we want as less stress as I can so you take that to mean what you want it to mean we're, we're gonna do what we need to do to be happier than we are with dealing with the same nightmare every single day of the week that's all I can say um, Elliot Mills well thank you very kindly for the super chat I do honestly appreciate that I, I honestly always forget about that even being an option I'm not a big pusher on trying to get people to give me money or anything else like that I know I got a, a patreon page but I honestly feel like 
you get something, uh, the information that I don't like to just share everywhere on Patreon and, and stuff like that, too. I am... I am passionate about what I do. So for me, this isn't just like, hey, I want to get a bunch of money. I would give up making more money to, to do something else or to be happier any day of the week. You know, I've been offered jobs very recently, some really, you know, six digit salary jobs really recently, uh, real recently, um, like in the last two days for, for something. And I, I'm not, I don't, I don't want that anymore. I don't, even if, even if it was, an insane amount of money. I'm not interested. I don't. I don't want the rat race. I'm. My eyes have made me a hermit. If, if I don't say that much, but my eyes have made me feel like a hermit these days, and I'm. I'm okay with that. Um, I don't want to be back in the rat race anymore, and and I'd rather just be able to do what I want when I want, and and even if I don't have a fortune coming in because of my decisions, I don't care. I don't care. I'm. I'm happy, and my wife and me. Are, are probably happier than most every couple we know because we're so tight because of the fact that I didn't care about the money and neither did the wife and, and my stuff. My kids don't care if stuff's used. They've got used Christmas presents for like, you know, electronics, you know, expensive ones when we didn't have the money. Um, nowadays it's different and we still don't, they still don't care if it's used stuff. My son collects and both of them do. So, you know, I'm, you know, do what's best for your family or, or yourself, I guess, is, is a point of this, too. And the, the, the market of reselling in general right now is is there for you to be able to do it. I know it's going to take you some time. And everybody, a lot of people give up because they, they just, people don't, don't know a direction, I guess. Maybe they're lost in direction, but I don't give up. I, if I want something... And somebody's telling me you're not going to get. I'm, I'm going to want to get it even more. It it the making it hard makes it more more desirable to me. I guess. I, I guess maybe that's the point. Maybe that's the wrong thought of it. But I take it as a challenge, and and I get obsessed about about this business. And and this is my life 24 seven. So again, I ramble about it, but I, I could talk all day about about reselling. That's just me. I, I I do love it, but there's certain aspects about it that I would love to get rid of. Um, don't take the black pill, John Jones. I'm doing uh, true uh, rarities. I'm doing most of my business on Macari currently. I'm not going to ask revenue, but if he's doing most of his business, it's probably paying his bills. So again, eBay is not the only site. I wonder if China has had an effect on eBay like the pulling of adult material. Just a thought. Somebody told me... Uh, I don't want to speak on that. I'm not, somebody told me some numbers with stocks and stuff. I don't. I told you I was looking into the Aiden and if eBay got stocks. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to say anything else until I've, I've got like a screenshot to show somebody, so no one can come after me and say that I'm trying to state something that isn't true. But uh, somebody gave me some information after I did that call out. I think in last week's live show, people send me some stuff, some very interesting stuff, some stuff that's probably not supposed to be shared sometimes, and I'm not ever asking anybody to do that. So don't don't do it but some sometimes i do get some stuff that's if it turns out to be true isn't very good on the side of the business that that they sent it to me from anyway i, I want to go into that um yeah meg whitman uh meg whitman collected lunch pails and jumped on board sure she made uh, some mistakes but she honored us with her walk of fame uh, of ebay live and uh, great food great davy jones but david i i i forgot i me and the wife were at disney and we were just getting off the monorail uh, in front of the Magic Kingdom, and there was a guy on the on the monorail right near us. And I, the wife kept saying, "I know him," and I, we both thought we knew him personally or something. And the guy behind him, um, I figured, I figured, God, why do I know? Where do we meet them at? And the wife goes, "That's Davy Jones. That's Davy Jones." And I'm like, "Oh!" And then I looked, I'm like, "Oh my God, it's Davy Jones!" And then as soon as I thought about that. Greg Ullman was the guy standing behind him, and Greg Ullman was performing that night. I think Davy Jones was. I think this was when the Beatles, or not the Beatles, the Monkees were doing the Three Monkees. Um, I can't remember what their new title. They had the a new Monkees tour with just the three of them. I think uh, uh, which, who was it that didn't do it? Michael Nesmith, I think, wasn't going to do it again. I think that's who it was. But uh, anyway, they were performing there in, in town that night, and it was them. And we, we had them, in fact, I still have it in, in a box. It was the seal from our wedding certificate. I thought we lost it, and I found it in my wallet. And he signed the, the we got a new seal, obviously, but we, he signed that seal, and I still have it. It's the back of the seal to our wedding certificate that he signed, him and Greg Allman. But 
he sung and he danced for us after. We waited till everybody was gone. He invited us, Davy Jones invited us back to his, uh, back to Pleasure Island and wanted to hang out and party behind the scenes with him. I was like, blow it. He was, he was drunk. He was, he was teetotal and drunk. Greg Ullman didn't seem like he was, but th this is one of those oddball experiences. But he was the nicest guy in the world. I couldn't believe it. Um, I, I always remember him from, uh, we used to watch the monkeys at Shakey's Pizza here locally when I was a kid, but um, uh, the the, very, uh, the new Brady Bunch series, he's in one of them. That's what I always remember uh, with, with him and stuff. But anyway, I know I rambled. So you can thank uh, Naomi for bringing the uh, Davy Jones comment up there. Uh, anyway, I've been to Las Vegas. I'm not a big fan of Las Vegas. I probably wouldn't have went just because of where it's at. Just, just me. Yeah, it is about capitalism, I would say, but I am, though I, I play in the capitalistic market, I'm not, I like helping people, I guess. Uh, there's, there's a, there's a middle point that I can't get below, you know, I, I, I if somebody works for me, I try to take care of them in any way I can because I want them to know that I value them as a person for giving me part of their life as uh, an employee. And that's how I truly and honestly, sincerely, 100% think. If there's a there's one or two ex-employees on here, there's one or two ex-employees that are in a couple of my Facebook groups that I worked with as a restaurant manager. And any one of my employees will tell you to some of the extents I went out to help my employees. I even went to court for one of them when their father was beating them. I mean, I told you some of these stories, but I, I feel for some of the employees. If you don't do me right, though, I'm not going to help you out in that stint. You've got to show me that you respect the job you have, and I'm going to respect your your life and, and stuff and i always worked with people on schedules and all that stuff too and if i assigned them to one of my the managers under me as a gm i always made sure that they followed and made sure of seniority and i, I take care of my employees i don't that's that's the problem with capitalism that too many people don't understand if you go back to capitalism in the 40s and 50s in fact i included uh, a little segment in there and i hope people got what that point of that segment was after yesterday's amazon changes video but if you go back with capitalism, with with one of the most productive times in in the the twentieth um, century for capitalism, it was a booming market and quality of life was horrendously good for people not in the management. But there wasn't that big difference between the upper management what they made and what there was here now. There wasn't that that difference in what they make versus what the low end people made. It meant that more people were able to be compensated enough to make them feel valuable to to the company and to themselves. It gave them a, a boost in their morale. They felt like they were they were appreciated, I guess is the point. And that's what that's where capitalism strayed from, from a, a more of a moral base, in my opinion. And again, I've studied this in college, so I'm not going to just say I'm spewing something out. But the the post-war economic um, production uh, boom was just horrendous, and so many people, you know, benefited from it. Probably most of our parents benefited from that time, the exact frame of time I'm talking about, the exact frame of time that that couple minute video segment and the end of yesterday's video was talking about that means something all that information that you're reading compare that to what it is now that's the point of that and i hope somebody out there got that i put clips in in the end of every video and, and either they're put in there for making you think about business or they're put in there for things that you most every one of the vintage commercials has a collectible tied to it even for like like pantyhose legs commercials which um uh, there's one of them i really like the song in it so i may have used it a few times the containers that those came in are collectible the container lid from one of those legs eggshell containers is a historical piece of memorabilia from motion picture history because it was used on the the y-wings the y-wings caps on star wars and every star wars from 77 78 release through 83's return of the jedi that shows a y-wing the model is a cap from those legs pantyhose if you didn't know that so i mean every little aspect of those i is is all tied to this and i like reading into stuff and i like that whole aspect i know i'm rambling i know that's off topic but you know that that to me that that little clip I put in there is, is meaningful in more ways than, than you would imagine because that was 
that's the time. Again, I don't want it to go back to that time overall, but I think we, what we've lost in corporate America is the fact that your employees are an asset to the company and not to be treated as an expendable asset, but a non-expendable, important asset that makes the company run. And that's, that's the point that I'm just trying to say. I know that rambles. I know I'll take heat. And I'm, I know I got a couple more negatives just on that comment there, but that's the facts. If you're not appreciated at work, are you going to want to go into work? That's why I don't want to go to work for somebody else because they don't care about you. You're just a number. They can just hire somebody else right behind your back for many of the jobs, just like managers or even a regional manager to some extent. But anyway, I'm going to let it go out there. I know I didn't get to a lot of questions. I know I kind of went off on a few things, but, you know, this is the re reselling world we're in. And, and I just don't be left behind because you're only thinking um, one site. You know, expand, expand horizontally and go to some other platforms. You don't necessarily have to expand up and out right away, but you can get your feelers wet in a few other platforms. And in, in all honesty, that that's always been a, a big plus. Anybody I know, most any of the channels that I, I I've been uh, pointed out, or the few that I do see, most every one of those is on more than one platform. And and again, there's a very good reason. One shuts down, you're still okay. End of story. But anyway, I do honestly and sincerely thank everybody for coming on. Uh, those in Patreon, the next video for Patreon is going to be um, some of the items posted on the community tab. And we're going to go over and I'm going to detail that. There's a lengthy question on the top there about um, Shopify import, export, and branching off. We're going to go into depth again on that. Um, and I'll probably point out some, I do have some video breakdowns here on YouTube on setting up the structure of your business, basically a diagram on what connects up to where, whether you're connecting up to HIP, eBay, eBay to Inc, Frog, Inc, Frog to Shopify, Shopify back out to Etsy, uh, Amazon, or any of the other platforms. Um, We've now got options with PayPal, as I've talked about before. I actually have an article going in e-commerce bytes this coming in a few more weeks on uh, PayPal options as well. I will probably be able to show you some other options with PayPal shortly here. I've been delving into, um, again, expanding out all we can. So you'll see some of that. But I'm going to let it go out there. I know I'm rambling. I did fix for those couple folks who asked on the call-outs for those who uh, do help uh, and do Patreons and stuff. I did change the credits. I do apologize. I know I changed all the other credits, but I did forget the online. The new one you will see going forward. I will be updating all of the call-outs at the end tomorrow uh, before... Tomorrow's YouTube video is done, so you won't see the new call-outs in there. But on Saturday's video, I don't think I got the credits in there. You will see them going weekend out, all the new folks who have um, uh, pledged for Patreon. So, again, I thank you all, and I hope everybody has a good night.